big budget videos aren't the only way to sell a group. Very often, directors are constrained by small budgets and tight time schedules when they make videos. Tim Pope has made many which have relied on ingenuity and imagination instead of gloss and fancy locations. See, I don't think pop music is about commercials because a, a lot of them, you know, these days, if you're looking at something subjectively, I don't think that's what pop promos should be. That's a big difference. I think they should be subjective films, you know. Uh, basically, a lot of pop songs say, I do this, I do that, and I think that's what the film should say. It should go with the, you know, their, the argument of the people who are in the film. The first real one I've made was Bedsitter for Soft Cell, and I was really fortunate because it sort of went out on top of the pops and everything, so it was quite sort of fortunate, and the single did well. And it, it was a very difficult time then, because at that point there were about, I think, only about six other video directors at that point existing in the world. So I sort of came along, and they were all making it. was just after Vienna, had, I think, had been made. So everyone at that point was making sort of sub-feature film sort of things. And I, I basically came along and said, I don't want to do that sort of thing. And all the record companies said, well, you've got to do that sort of thing. And I said, no, I'm not going to. So I actually did, like, 90 storyboards before anyone ever... Everyone thinks it's easy getting your first one. I did something like 90 before they let me do my first thing. And um, then I did Bed Sitter, and then it sort of took off from there. I think I'm very fortunate, and a lot of the bands I've worked with do have a certain emotional... I think that's the sort of bands I attract, you see. Um, things like The Cure, you see, I think there is a feeling you get from it. Not necessarily emotion, because I think that's a, bit, a big word, but there's, there's a feeling you get for it. And I think I've always, I'm very lucky to work with people like The Cure, because I just put that feeling over with the film. I don't go on every film to make an award winner. I feel a lot of people think, oh, we've done something really new here. We've scribbled all over the film and the people look really weird, you know, so that's a great effect. And those are the things that get awards. Those are the films that are condoned by the industry. They shouldn't be. They're the ones that give you a feeling. It's like my film in the wardrobe. It gave people a feeling of claustrophobia. It gave people the feeling of the song. A lot of the bands I know, like The Cure, know, how, know who they're talking to. They, and the people are here and the bands are there. And I think there's all these bits in the way. And that's the problem. That's what stops the directness. There are these marketing men and they say, this is how it should look. And there are these people and they say, well, we can't show that. And if you, but if you just put those two things together, then you're talking to a lot of people. I mean, I don't want to make esoteric films. I wouldn't want esoteric arty films at all. I think it's very important they talk to people. I shoot promos very basically. I, like, if you look at the way people shot um, films in the early days of film, they used to have a little box with a hole on the front, as I say, and you'd shoot a wide shot, and then all i do is pick it up, shove it on my shoulder, move it in for a close-up, and that's my close-up. I don't sort of zoom in on a zoom lens or anything, and it's, therefore it makes it a lot more direct, you see, which I think a lot, of, a lot of promos are shot like American sort of feature films, and I don't think that's good. Loads of long lenses and things like that. I don't necessarily like that. You see, the sort of bands I work with, like The Cure and Talk Talk and all those sort of bands, they don't mind being seen how they are. And we always show them how they are. I can't really talk about other people's work. I just know that I happen to work with people who don't mind being shown. That if they've got a spot there, I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think, you know, you should put massive cheekbones on somebody if they haven't got them or to dye their hair. I mean, I heard of a promo, someone, uh, I, think it, I think it was Wham or someone shot a promo and basically he didn't like the colour of his hair, so they had to reshoot it. I mean, you know, it's not, not important, really. I don't think it's that important. I think if people look truth, if they look basic and truthful in a way, I think that, that ironically, again, is a better way of selling a record. I think it's a lot more direct. I don't think the film would make you think it's a cat film about a camera and a swinging rope. You see, I don't think you'd think that. I think you'd soak up the atmosphere, but I think when you heard the song and the next time, you, you'd, it would still allow you flexibility. And that's why I'm against all the meaning, meaningful looks and all those sort of conventions, because there they impose on the song very badly and they destroy the song. I mean, if you look at the Beatles songs, all that sort of stuff, they never had promos. I mean, they made some great promos, but to their early stuff. And imagine, oh, I want to hold your hand, she loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you imagine what they would have done these days? I mean, it frightens me.